everyone, Kelly Schaffner here. Welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Poshmark cases, returns on Poshmark. Yeah, it's it's not a fun subject. I think it's something that perhaps isn't talked about enough here on YouTube. And so I'm here to talk about it today because I've had a few Poshmark cases and like I said, they're not fun, but I've found a way to deal with Poshmark cases and that's what I want to share with you today. If you're new to my channel, hello, welcome. I'm really glad that you are here and I hope you will subscribe and join me for a future video. If you are joining me because you have found yourself with a Poshmark case, I just want, a first thing I want to say is relax. Relax, it's okay, and you're in very, very good company. I think if you sell on Poshmark or probably any platform out there, if you do it for any length of time, you're going to get a case. It's kind of a fact of reselling. Just Think about big department stores. They have returns. And think about when you have returned items, even if it was because something didn't fit. <laughs> you went and returned it and the clerks at the store were polite and nice and took the return. That's what I think about today. When I have a return request, I just think about how I would like to be treated. Now, the first case that I got on Poshmark, that was like someone punched me in the stomach. Let me tell you about the first case I got on Poshmark. Well, first I'll talk about the item. The item was a blouse. I'll show you a picture here of the blouse. It was a Velvet by Graham and Spencer blouse, and I purchased it for myself, and I think I paid about $78, $80 for this top. It was, I thought it was so cute. It was all cotton. I think it was made in India. It was navy and it had pinstripes through it, but it had the prettiest contrasting uh, pink stitching on the neckline. There might've been some, there was a, a smocking on the sleeves. It was really a cute blouse, but it did not look good on me. Little short-waisted and I, put it on many, many times, styled it, and thought I was going to wear it out. I never, ever wore the blouse out of the house. Did I sell it as new? No, I didn't. I sold it as excellent use condition because it was a blouse I tried to wear, and it just didn't look good on me. Now, when I first listed it, I listed it for a lot of money because I thought I was, I didn't want to part with it. I wanted it to work for me, but it didn't sell at the higher price tag. And I just kept coming down on my price, down on my price. I probably even sent out an offer to like her. I don't recall, but the blouse finally sold for $24. Yes, I was so happy. And a few days later, I got that notice. Case opened. And you can read the details and you can reply if you want. So I immediately opened up the email. The buyer claimed at the hemline of the blouse there was a pinhole. And she also referenced my condition as excellent used condition. She said excellent used condition would not have a pinhole. Well, I did not agree with her. But let me tell you a little story. I started making sales on Poshmark and I would get ratings, you know, a five star rating, but I wasn't getting the love notes and I really wanted some love notes. And if you're not familiar with what a love note is, that's basically a review. I wanted some reviews so that if people were considering shopping my closet, they could read love notes and see that I was a trusted seller. So what I did is I found a connection where I was able to buy some earrings and get them on the cheap. And every time I sold a blouse or a dress or a jacket, I would include a pair of fashion earrings that I thought would style nicely with that blouse. And I started getting love notes, but I think the earrings, I think those earrings I sent maybe in shipping had poked a hole in that blouse. I sure I responded. I don't remember how I responded, but I, I, I do remember that I did respond to this case. And when I responded, the buyer actually responded again and criticized 
my poor photography, my poor photographs. And yeah, she kind of let me have it at that point. And Poshmark sided with her. I got my blouse back. It was in the same condition that I had sent it to her. I did inspect the garment and I found a little pinhole. And she also sent the free earrings back. And at that point in time, I quit sending earrings as a free gift because I don't want to damage the products that I am sending. So yeah, that one hurt. And I spent a lot of time on the phone with my friend as I dealt with that very first case on Poshmark. Did I make a mistake? I don't know. What I do know is the buyer was not happy with her purchase and she had a legitimate reason by Poshmark standards to return the blouse. I got the blouse back, I used the same photos, I put the listing back up, and it did sell, I think within a couple weeks after I relisted it for $39. So I did end up making $15 more than I had sold it in the beginning, so I was very happy about that. So there's hope. Don't get discouraged. Just because someone wants to return an item doesn't mean that the item is not sellable. I'll tell you another return that I had happen. I sold a watch. It was a men's watch and I don't really sell a lot of men's and I really don't sell a lot of jewelry. But my husband had this watch. It was a watch that was given to him in lieu of payment. And my husband accepted this watch from a customer of his. And before accepting it, my husband had Googled it and he thought it was a fair trade. He brought this watch home. Now my husband wears an eye watch, so I don't know why he accepted this watch, but he did. It, ha it came in this really cool box. And I think my husband liked the box more than the watch. The watch was a diver's watch by the brand Invicta. That watch sat in my husband's sock drawer for years, years. And I was looking for things to sell in my Poshmark closet. And I was putting socks in my husband's drawer. And I said, hey, can I sell this watch? He said, okay. So I did a little research. I listed the watch for $150 and I got an offer for $120 on the watch. I sold it. I accepted that offer. I sent the watch out. Once the buyer received the watch, he immediately contacted me and said the watch was a woman's watch. He was not happy with the size of the watch. He was willing to pay $80 at that time. Well, you know what? This is Poshmark. So the sale is the sale. And I immediately called my husband and I said, do you know that was a woman's watch? And my husband was like, oh, no, it's not. That's a men's watch. Look at the serial number. Luckily, I did have pictures of the serial number. I was able to find the exact watch. Although my description on this watch was very, very simple, it was not misleading. It was a men's watch, and I responded that way. I did respond to this case supplying photographs and the serial number just so that everyone would know that I had represented this product to the best of my ability, and I was not deceitful about that. And at that time, this buyer really laid into me. Just insults and criticisms started coming in my direction. And when that happens, I think it's human instinct to want to fight back. And it took everything that I had just to sit back and let Poshmark do their job. Because I pay Poshmark 20% of every single sale that I make on their platform. Part of that fee just pays for the privilege to sell on Poshmark, but part of that fee I pay for Poshmark to act as a mediator between the buyer and the seller if there's a problem. And I thought, I'll just let Poshmark handle this. And truthfully, I was a little bit curious how they would handle it. In dealing with all returns, I try to keep it very, very professional. I try to bear in mind, how would my favorite department stores handle this situation? And I, I just don't think it would be by engaging in any sort of dispute with a customer. So I let Poshmark do their thing and Poshmark did side with me on that case which I think is fair because I did not misrepresent the product. I, You know what? I still feel bad that the guy wasn't 100% satisfied with his purchase. 
So I had another case opened, another unsatisfied customer that wanted to keep the product but also wanted a refund. They opened a case with Poshmark and I feel awful about this because this was a big glaring mistake on my part and I missed it. I received a jacket, a Woolrich full-length Aztec print jacket from one of my friends, and I listed it on Poshmark. In fact, I even modeled this jacket because it was a full-length, duster-length jacket, and I'll show you some pictures so you can see this jacket, and it had conchos, metal conchos with leather uh, straps coming out of it all the way down. Really a quite beautiful jacket, and I sold the jacket for $100. $50. Now, in the description, I wrote that there were eight conchos. There were four conchos down either side of the jacket. When the jacket sold, I pulled it out of storage and I hung it up. I had to find something to pack this big jacket in. And my husband walked by and he said, do you realize there's a concho missing from that jacket? And I looked and I was like, oh, no, there were only seven conchos. One of the bottom conchos was missing. But when I listed it, when I looked at it, my mind's eye always saw eight. Before I packaged this code up, I messaged the buyer and I admitted my mistake. I told her there are only seven conchos on this jacket. I don't know how I missed it. My bad. I noticed it. And there's not another con show. I did <laughs> offer a suggestion. I said, you could take one off and it would be even. Nonetheless, I made a mistake. I asked for forgiveness and I asked her how she would like me to proceed. If she wanted me to send the jacket or if she would like for me to cancel the order. And she did not respond. So I sent the order, knowing full well that she could open a case. This coat was not as described. And she, sure enough, opened a case and she was hot. She was so upset that the jacket arrived with seven conchos. And she said that she had read in the description there were eight. She noticed it in the pictures even that there were only seven conchos. And she said that she thought maybe one was inside. You know how sometimes they put the button inside the coat? and she was very upset. She did open the case and say she wanted to keep the jacket, but she wanted her money back because she felt she had been duped. I sent her a copy of that note that was dated before I sent the jacket out. I just sent that in my return case and, you know, admitted that I noticed the flaw before I sent the item. When I responded in this way, she immediately closed the case and that was the end of it. I was paid and she got a coat with seven conchos. I felt horrible about that mistake, but you know what? I'm going to make more horrible mistakes because I'm just human. I do think, it's just my philosophy, that when we do make mistakes, if we just stand up and own it and ask what we can do to make it right that most people appreciate that and will be satisfied with that type of attitude. Not all, but some. Uh, just resist. I would just say resist, resist, resist that desire to be right because we're just not all of us are right all the time. Now, I want to talk to you about the recurring mistake that I've had cases opened up against me. And that recurring mistake is color. The color of my pictures versus the actual color of the product. I've had this happen on more than one occasion. And guys, I don't have any great advice about making that go away. I'm wondering, do we all see color a little bit differently? I should Google that. And there's colors that you photograph. You know this if you have been doing it for any length of time. Black is really tough to photograph and red is tough. White is tough. And you, I do my very, very best to take a picture. Coral. I recently had a coral color handbag that I took pictures of and boy, it looked almost like a fluorescent coral in my pictures and there was nothing I could do to tone that down and get the actual color of the bag. 
well, maybe I could if I just practiced more, but you know, I'm trying to turn out listings every single day and I posted a picture and when the buyer got the handbag, they looked different, she thought, with the color. And that's true. I've had that happen with a handbag. I've had that happen with pants. I've had that happen with shoes. The bottom line is the customer is just not satisfied. How do I respond to those cases? I don't. I let Poshmark do their thing. That's what I pay them for to mediate. If the customer is not happy and if there is such a dramatic difference between my picture and the product they received, then I'm willing to take the product back. I don't sell any products that I'm not happy to have returned to me because any product that I sell has value. It has value to me and that's why I have listed it in my Poshmark store. Now, I'm always super excited to make a sale on Poshmark, but it is not the end of the world if I have an unhappy customer on Poshmark. And guys, I have sold flawed items on Poshmark and I find that customers will buy flawed items if I am just very, very descriptive about each and every flaw or problem with that item. I have a girlfriend and she lets me share this story with her permission. She and I have been selling on Poshmark for about the same length of time and she's a dear friend of mine in real life. She bought a pair of Prada heels on Poshmark for, I don't know, some crazy great price, like $60, these beautiful shoes. She was so excited to get them and when she got them, the heels on these shoes were so chewed up like a dog had gotten to these heels. And of course she opened a case and the seller fought her as if she had chewed up the heels. Now she called me and I took a look at the listing and I noticed nowhere in that listing were a clear picture of the back of the heels. And that in itself is deceitful. Poshmark approved that return. My friend was able to return those shoes and get her money back. But my friend also, she's kind of a detective, she went to the girl's closet and found out that this particular seller had sold those same shoes on two occasions before my friend bought them. Just disclose the flaws. Because even with a pair of Prada heels, someone would be happy to take them to a cobbler if you only let them know what they're getting into before they spend their money. I should wind this all down by letting you know that number one, that first case hurt. <laughs> that first case felt very, very personal to me. I felt like my integrity and my honesty and even my worth as a reseller were in question and I wanted to be that Poshmark seller that did everything perfect, but you know what? No one does. No one does. Not even you. If you're watching this and you say, I have no returns, it's going to happen. If you continue, it will happen to you. And is there something to be learned from every single return? Perhaps. If we're willing to be open-minded and look at returns as a learning opportunity rather than getting on the defensive and defending ourselves, I think that we can improve our businesses just like every single review. Now, some people are just cranky and you're never going to make them happy, but I do think that some four-star reviews or less than perfect reviews can offer constructive criticism that can help me to improve my business. So I do always take a look at those and sometimes... Sometimes I just shake it off and I think this is a cranky buyer. We all get them. They're out there and not a single one of us is immune from those cranky buyers. And guys, there's scammers out there too. There are people that want something for nothing. There are people with buyer's remorse that will actually damage your product. It's kind of the cost of doing business. Unfortunately, it happens Lucky it doesn't happen that often. My friend that I was telling you about, it happened to my friend. My friend sold a handbag that was brand new with tags. It had belonged to her mother. She sold it on Poshmark and the buyer opened a case and said the bag was filled with mold. And we were like, what are you talking about? And she supplied pictures to Poshmark that showed black marks in the bottom of the bag and Poshmark approved that case. When my friend got her bag returned, the entire interior of that bag had been just drawn on with Sharpie and the bag was destroyed. And it was heartbreaking to my friend. There had to be a better way, but that is 
what this particular buyer chose to do. It broke my heart to see my friend take that loss, but she took that loss. And this is what I believe. You reap what you sow. Some people call it karma, but the truth is if you put positive energy into the world, that is what comes back to you. And if you put dishonesty and negativity out there, it will come back to you multiplied. And there is a life after a Poshmark case and it's a good life. So that's my message of hope today. Please let me know in the comments below how you have handled your Poshmark cases if you have got them. Okay, I'm really, really going to wrap this up because my battery is blinking and I have to talk fast and please leave a comment below. Let me know how you are handling your cases if you have had them and what you do if you do anything differently. I've learned so much from you. You guys are so helpful. Thank you very much. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe. I'll see you in the next one guys. Bye-bye. Blessings.